Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and I'm back with another, well, not voice actor spotlight. This is a box art artist spotlight. Why am I doing this? Because of the nostalgia for the box art of the G1 Transformers. With the severe restrictions about advertising to kids on TV back then, toy companies had to get creative to draw kids' eyes to their toys. Hasbro was in the same boat when it came to releasing the Transformers, so they looked for an artist who could make their boxes stand out. And you know who they found? Mark Watts. He has been painting for almost 40 years now. But in the 80s, he stood out because his classic car paintings were shiny. And Hasbro wanted to use that style for their packaging art. And it worked. Because almost 40 years later, people are willing to pay ridiculous prices for those G1 boxes. I have to say that I found very little about his personal life. So this will revolve more around his art. Born? Well, I couldn't find a bird date. I wish there was an IMDB for painters. I did find that Mark attended the School of Visual Arts in New York City and Temple University Tyler Campus in Philadelphia. He loved painting classic cars because that's what he grew up with, and after college he spent six months calling ad agencies, publishing companies, books, magazines, while working on his portfolio, on top of going to New York to have between four and seven appointments in one day. His first job was thanks to a painting of Pope John Paul II he had in his portfolio that he had done for his wife's uncle. During a meeting with William Morrow Publishing, the art director showed her editor the image since they were working on a book called Man from a Far Country, and they decided to use Mark's painting for the cover of the book. That was the start of his career. After that, he was able to get an agent who got him a lot of high-profile jobs. Back in 1982, his agent showed him the Transformers toys, some being prototypes. He was given a Transformer Bible, which contained technical drawings of each Transformer including the placement of colors, logos and such. The very first painting was Bumblebee, followed by the other five minibots, which took about 80 hours each. He completed the drawings with Force Perceptive to make the toys more exciting and menacing. His objective on these illustrations was to make them as reflective as possible, like car paint. He completed the set of six and Hasbro was very happy with the result. That got him to create about 45 boxes and other related Transformer art. Mark had no idea this artwork would be such a sensation to this day. Other than Hasbro, Mark has worked for clients such as Walt Disney, Warner Brothers Pictures, Paramount Pictures, Sony, and Tyco Toys. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You've seen his art on Tyco Toys Crash Dummies boxes, and he also created the logo illustration for the Clint Eastwood movie Pink Cadillac. Now that's a classic. Mark also had done many paintings for Budweiser when they were due in their limited edition collector car stains. His work has been displayed in many shows around the country and also at the prestigious Society of Illustrators Club in New York City. And Mark was also a featured artist on the QVC Home Shopping Network. I know this is a shorter video, but I really wanted to mention that you can't deny the impact Mark Watts had on the 80s versions of ourselves. We saw the art, bought the toys, and became fans for life. We still love the art to this day. It's still so popular that Mark's website allows you to buy signed copies of the original art and also his new table art concept, which looks amazing. Follow the links in the description. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of Mark Watt's career. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Also leave a comment, I really like reading you guys. Keep coming back, I have more on the way. And remember, nothing in life gives you right to be an asshole. Take care!